been a doomsday book of British railways like this. Despised by many, Dr Beeching dropped a bombshell on the railways. His brief was to make them viable. It was the biggest shake-up the railways had ever seen. Uh, it was not a case of swinging an axe and chopping off anything that got in the way. It was a very um, carefully considered surgical operation. And for the Midlands, that operation saw the region's rail network shrink dramatically, with scores of lines and hundreds of stations disappearing. It's left the region littered with disused railway lines like this while some are now cycle tracks or walkways others have simply gone back to nature overgrown but not forgotten this is the site of oswestry station the second biggest town in shropshire it bore the brunt of the beaching axe this is what it looked like before the closures a thriving railway town and a major junction on the midlands rail network your, your office was upstairs wasn't it off the down platform here brian rowe and richard jones used to work on the railways in oswestry the beaching axe was a bitter blow well, the railway had been a major employer. Um, when it finished, people had to go to, away to work and try and get work locally. That was the, the problem, though, wasn't it, really? When they closed the place down, we were absolutely isolated. Railways provided vital links between communities all over the Midlands. Without them, life was hard. Leslie Oppitz, author of the Lost Railways series of books, says the beaching impact was devastating. It was an awful shock to people working on the railways because many jobs were lost, thousands of jobs were lost uh, along with these uh, lost tracks. Uh, stations disappeared and people were marooned in a sense. But 45 years after beaching, some routes that closed have reopened. Trains are now running again on the line from Walsall to Rugeley and Midland Metro trams run on an old track bed between Birmingham and Wolverhampton. And with the railway now carrying ever-increasing numbers of passengers, the question being asked by many is, should so much have been closed? The thing about Beeching that I think was indefensible was that not only did he shut the lines, but the government then allowed the, the roots of those lines to be ripped up. So nowadays, when we want to put them back, quite often it's impossible to do so because the land's been sold and there's a supermarket or some housing development on them. The good news is that in the future the rail network could expand if high-speed lines are built. Although it won't mean a return to the days of steam, it'll certainly help bring back the convenience of travelling by rail that was lost during the beaching era. Peter Plisner, BBC Midlands Today.